Previously, we were able to show that the voltage difference, the electric potential difference, is equal to the negative of the integral of the dot product of the electric field vector and our infinitely small vector given by dl. Now, this essentially gives us what the voltage difference is, what the electric potential difference is between any two points as a result of the electric field. So if we know what the electric field is, we can calculate what the voltage difference is. Now, can we reverse the argument? Can we calculate what the electric field is as a result of our voltage? Well, in this lecture, we essentially want to use this equation and solve for an equation that gives us the electric field in terms of our voltage. So, we start with this equation and we want to express this equation in its differential form. So we essentially take the derivative of the left and right side and we get the following result. So our infinitely small voltage difference is equal to the negative of the dot product of the electric field and our infinitely small distance given by dl. So dv is the infinitely small voltage difference between two points points, let's call them points 1 and 2, that are infinitely small distance, dl apart as shown in the following diagram. Now, what exactly is the dot product by definition? Well, the dot product is equal to the product of the magnitude of these two vectors multiplied by the cosine of the angle theta between them. Now, for this particular case, notice our dl vector and our electric field vector point along the same axis. They point in the same direction, and that means the angle between them is zero. And because cosine of the angle zero is one, this cosine becomes one, and we see that our dv is equal to the negative of the product of the electric field and our infinitely small distance given by dl. So, now we can take this equation, rearrange it, and solve for the electric field. We find that the electric field is equal to the negative of the derivative of the voltage difference with respect to our distance given by L. So let's call this equation I. And notice equation I is the equation only when our electric field points in the same direction as our DL. In other words, when the angle is assumed to be zero between these two vectors. So we see uh, by this equation that the electric field is equal to the negative of the rate of change of the electric potential with respect to our distance. Now what if our electric field is a three-dimensional vector? Then that basically means that our electric field depends on three different distances. On the x distance, the y distance, and the z distance. And that that means we get the following three partial differential equations. So we have our electric field vector that points along the x-axis is equal to the negative of the partial derivative of the voltage difference with respect to our distance. Now we simply replaced our L with the x-distance that lies along the x-axis. And the same exact thing can be stated for our x, for our y component, and our z component electric field. So, let's actually apply this equation by looking at the following example. We'd like to calculate the electric field due to a ring of uniform charge at point A as shown in the following diagram. So, let's suppose we have uh, the following ring of uniform charge and we want to calculate what our electric field is at point A, a horizontal distance x from the center of that ring. Now the radius of this ring is given by R0. So we essentially call this our x-axis and to solve this problem we first have to calculate what the voltage is. Remember we want to use this equation to calculate the electric field at point A. But to use this equation we have to solve for our voltage at point A. So the method is as follows. If we know the voltage at point A as a result of the charge ring, we can then determine the electric field using equation I. 
Notice that by the symmetry of this ring, all, all the electric field that points along the y-axis will cancel out. And that means we'll only have an electric field along the x-axis at point A. So we only have to really worry about this equation and not these equations. So how exactly are we going to calculate the voltage at point A? Well, we actually calculated what the voltage at point A is due to a charge ring in a previous lecture and we followed the following steps. So we're not really going to go into detail in these steps, but what I will say is we essentially break down, we cut up our ring into infinitely small sections with infinitely small charge. We calculate what the voltage is as a result of each infinitely small charge and then we integrate. So we see the voltage at point A as a result of this charged ring is equal to the integral of our dV which is equal to we treat every single infinitely small charge dQ as if it was a point charge and that means this becomes as follows. So 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught we take the integral of dQ divided by R. So notice that R is the distance between our point and this section, our infinitely small charge given by dQ. So we can use this right triangle to solve for our R in terms of R0 and X. So R squared is equal to R0 squared plus X squared and R is equal to the square root of R squared plus X squared. So we replace our R with the following result. So this becomes a constant and we can take it outside of our integral and then we are simply left with this. We integrate and we get this result. So this is our voltage at point A as a result of the ring of uniform charge. Now once again I skipped a few steps because we actually calculated this in a previous lecture. So this is the voltage at point A and now we know the voltage so we can use this equation to calculate the electric field. Now let's move on to step two. In step two we essentially want to apply equation I. We want to apply the following equation. So our electric field along the x-axis is equal to the negative of the partial derivative of the voltage which was calculated in part, I, in part 1 with respect to our x. So we take the partial derivative, we get this result, the 2's will cancel, the negative will cancel and we're left with the following equation. So the electric field at point A as a result of a ring of uniform charge is equal to the product x multiplied by q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by this quantity raised to the power of 3 divided by 2. So notice that x is, impl is simply this horizontal distance, our r naught is the radius of our ring of charge and our q is the quantity of charge found on the entire ring.